So in last week's class, we started looking at uh, wall sections and how, um, as I've been talking about, we can convert a Revit model into a Revit drawing. Um, I think the best way to think about this is some things we've looked at in the past are um, modeling geometry in Rhino and then converting it to a 2D line drawing, then taking that line drawing into Illustrator and working with line weights and hatches and fills and uh, maybe some of the projected geometry. Um, and in a similar way, there's a conversion process that needs to happen when you're working in a 3D model in Revit into a 2D drawing. And ultimately, at the end of the day, as architects, we typically are tasked with creating 2D drawings. Um, so to do that, uh, I've just mocked up a very simple row house facade here. Um, you can see in, if I go to my front view here, uh, I have some very basic levels, um, and then I have a concrete wall down here and a framed wall above, and I took a wall section through it. Uh, you can notice that I took a wall section through my windows. That way I can detail portions of those and how they'll be built in the future. And you can also see that when I click into this, I've changed my scale to be a half inch equals a foot, and I can change my visibility settings to be fine. What that allows is that if you've built a wall in Revit um, that has parameters, you'll actually see those layers. So let's look at that really quickly. Up here, I'm going to edit my wall type. You might have started out with the generic wall. I duplicated a wall and renamed it exterior. And here under structure, if I click edit, I can go in and see what are the layers of that wall. Well, you can see here we have the interior side and the exterior side. On the interior side, we have a gypsum wallboard, a vapor retarder. This is showing metal stud, but I know that I'm actually going to be building it out of, uh, let's say, uh, two by sixes. So those are five and a half inch studs. Um, then I have plywood sheathing, air infiltration barrier, air, and common brick. If I wanted to change these layers, I could come in and do that here. Let's say that I wanted to do um, a two by four, and then I'm going to insert just air, a gap of two inches and then on the outside of that I'm gonna have a, a double stud wall so we'll call this one metal stud layer I'm gonna be framing it out of wood but this one will be a two by six so five and a half inches then we have plywood sheathing which is great air infiltration barrier has no dimension it's, a, it's just a membrane um, and then a thermal barrier that's air if I wanted to I could come in and change this say no I don't I don't want an air barrier um, but let's see if there's any insulation loaded into the project. Here, I have rigid insulation. So I'll take rigid insulation and say we have three inches of that. I'm going to insert uh, more air. It's important to have a small gap between your brick and your insulation. I'll just say one inch. And now you'll see when I, when I, we have the wall here, but when I click OK, I'm going to slide this over so we can see it. I click OK, it's going to restructure this wall for me based on these parameters. Say OK. It says flare function pyres cannot ascend. OK, so what that's saying is that I have a structure layer, substrate, uh, and then a structure layer up here. Well, that's not actually the case. Um, it's going to be a thermal air barrier. So it's just saying that, hey, you had this categorized wrong. So now we'll move that away. We'll look here. OK. OK. You see my wall got a lot thicker, and that's fine. You can also see that my, my floor is now intersecting my wall. My windows are incredibly deep. And I can look at this and know that that's my, my first stud layer, air gap, second stud layer, sheathing, insulation. I want my window to align right here with my sheathing. So that way there's a recess on the front and a recess on the inside. If I click this window, I can edit its type. And here you can see that window inset is 3 quarter inches. Well, come back to this and say DI for dimension, and I'm going to say, well, from the face of this glass to the face of the sheathing, it's 10 and 3 eighths. So I'll come back to my window. I'll edit this type. The window and set is OK. I'm going to say equals 3 quarter inches plus 10 and 3 eighths, I think, which is 0.375 inches. If I click somewhere else, it'll do the math for me. I'll say apply, and it moves out, and I have 0. Uh, my dimension is zero, so I know it's in a line. Um, because I'm using the same window everywhere, it's going to update for me the whole way through. So this is the process of saying, like, okay, well, I modeled this, and I modeled this, and I modeled this, but 
this isn't a very helpful drawing for a contractor. Obviously, we don't want to see all this kind of messy line work. So let's go ahead and just start from the bottom. In class, I distributed um, some template files that have uh, some components that you can use, detail components that you can build into the wall. We're going to start with those, and then we'll look at other ways to add it. Down here, I have my, my concrete wall. And I know that that concrete wall would actually sit on a, a concrete footer. So all I need to do to draw that is to go to a detailed filled region here under annotate. Oops, click the wrong button. Actually, annotate detailed region. I'm just going to draw a rectangle. Um, and right now, I'll just snap it here. And then I can come and edit the dimensions. Let's say that rectangle is going to be, sure, 30 inches by 16 inches deep. That's great. If I come and hit tab, I might want that to be a very thick line. So here, I'm going to come in and just make it a wide line. And it's a diagonal hatch, but I know that I want concrete. It's going to be a footer. This is an existing wall, um, so I'm going to just drag it down. Right now, it's snapped to the basement, but I know that's, uh, I think, let's see, this is a 12-inch floor slab, so if I tell this wall to come negative 12 inches below the basement level, it'll sit right there on my footer. Here I have a 12-inch floor slab, which is pretty deep. I don't know that we'd ever need a 12-inch. So let's edit this and duplicate it and call it a basement floor. There we go, floor. I'm going to edit the structure of that floor. And I'll say, well, just give me 8 inches, and I'm going to have this as concrete. So concrete, lightweight. OK. So now my floor is updated. I can pull this filled region up to be right underneath the floor. If I wanted to, I could just adjust this wall so it snaps in place there. <clears throat> but that's not all I want to show in this wall section. As you can see from the template we were looking at, um, there's a lot of layers to this. I have a hatch here that's just earth. Then I have a soil membrane, which would keep uh, my gravel infill from falling down into the earth. I have an insulation line, um, which is rigid insulation that might be put under the slab. And then I have a vapor barrier. And then I have my concrete. Now this would be the case underneath my floor and also along the front of my building. So if I want, I can just use these templates. I could also come in and just make new filled regions and drag a region here and say that I want, okay, it's going to be two inches of insulation. Say OK. And then with this insulation, I might say that I want uh, just a cross hatch. <clears throat> um, well, it's a diagonal cross hatch right now. That's fine. If I wanted to match this insulation, I could do that here. Put that insulation on there. And I could send it to the back. So, well, you know what? I can't because this isn't. If this was a drafted region, I'd be able to pull that to the front and cover up that, have the thick line in the front. But we'll look at that in a second. Instead of making that, I'm going to use a little bit of easier mode here. Uh, I'm going to copy these two layers over. I'm going to rotate them 90 degrees. And I'm going to use those to annotate to my contractor that I want to see uh, waterproofing all the way up. I want to see insulation all the way up, insulation all the way down. And we'll drag that down. Similarly, I want to see uh, all these layers. We'll just take them all and not the concrete. Um, underneath the slab. Uh, it's important that you know the home stays warm and dry so I'm going to just show that we need to see insulation running underneath, uh, gravel infill which would make drainage better and uh, earth obviously. We're building on something. So that's how I would go and show that. I'm going to delete this concrete wall. So you can see there I went from uh, adding in drafting and detail components filled regions to indicate the construction technique I want. Um, if I move myself up a little bit, you can see now I have a, a more complicated task in front of me. Um, sometimes you get in, in really deep here and you get confused on what's what. So if I go to view, I can go to thin lines here and that just simplifies everything that I can see. Now I know I have a half inch drywall, two by four space, two by six, three quarter inch plywood, uh, three inches of insulation, a one inch space, and then a brick veneer. So I want to put in wood blocks. I want to show the contractor where the wood needs to go. To do that, I'm going to go in and say annotate, component, drop down, I'm going to say I want a detailed component. And I'm going to load a family. So when I load a family, it says, okay, well here's your Revit families. 
I want to use a detail item. Now it's broken up by division. I'm needing a wood because it's a framing. And I'll just say I want wood framing. I'm showing in sections, so nominal cut lumber section. Say open. And it asks, well, which profile are you going to be using? I'm going to use 2x4s, 2x6s, maybe a 2x8, a 2x10. Let's keep a 2x12 just in case. We'll say OK. Those load in. So now you can see I have a 2x4 that I can lay into the drawing. If I hit space, I can rotate it. And then here I'm going to put another one, come back, click it, and change it to a 2x6. Stretches across there. <clears throat> uh, I can copy this one down and the floor is going to be on 10 inch uh, joists, so we'll just make this a 2 by 10 hit space uh, to rotate it, there we go, and I'll put that up against the front wall here, and I'm going to copy it and say maybe they're every 2 feet on center. 2 feet. They might be 16 inches, 2 feet is probably a little much. I'll move those back, uh, 8 inches, if I do my math right, let's check that DI. From here to here should be 16. There we go. Copy this one one more time, one more time. There we go. You can see on the floor here I have a layer for plywood and then a finished floor, which could be like a red oak or um, you know, some maybe tile floor. So what I'd want to do is to come in and show that that's actually plywood. Same thing would be here, plywood. Um, I brought in another example here, but I don't actually have plywood uh, as part of this, so let's go ahead and just make it. I'll do a filled region, a rectangle. <clears throat> this zone here is good, and I will tell it to be. Let's see, I don't seem to have it. I'm going to search, make sure I'm not missing it. No, I don't have plywood as a hatch. So let's make a new one. I'm going to edit this type, I'm going to duplicate it, and I'm going to call this plywood. And then it says, well, what's your fill pattern? Well, right now it's set to diagonal cross hatch. I don't want that. I'm going to come in, and these are all my fills. Um, let's see if there's a plywood. There we go, plywood hatch. We'll say OK. We'll say OK. And now you can see I have a plywood hatch in the drawing. I can then copy this infill. I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees. And I'm going to bring it over so that it can be my sheathing on the outside of my wall. Just like that. Drag the ends up. Oops. like so. So we have some sheathing. I can also then copy this framing so that we can block out for the window above, just like that. And if I wanted to show insulation lines, I could go to annotate insulation. And I'm just going to drag right here. Escape. I'm going to click my insulation and I'm going to set it to be five and a half inch because that's the stud size. I'm going to fill that front face. <clears throat> As we move through this, you can see that little by little we're actually drawing right over top of the model. So I'm going to steal some of the blocks from the earlier, the imported project here. Um, this is a little uh, anchor, masonry anchor, that would tie it back to the wall so the bricks wouldn't slump off the face. That's not the level of detail I want to show in a wall section. That's too much. That's too detailed, and we don't need to see it. So for right now, I'm just going to copy the blocks, move them out, uh, copy them more than once by accident. So I'll copy this one a few more times. This is showing the mortar joint. And you can see here that uh, this top block is actually going to have to be trimmed for that window to fit. So we can show that. We have uh, some exterior insulation, which I can steal from this. I'll just copy this guy over <coughs> right there. And very quickly, uh, I don't really need to see the wall anymore. So I can hover over it, right click it, hide element. And that let me, lets me see just exactly what I had drawn. I'm going to use detail lines, DL, to show that there's studs that are framed between this up and down vertically. That's how a wall gets supported. And then on the outside here, I want to show a, three, or a half inch drywall. Well, I happen to have that right here. So let me just copy this from our template. It's no problem. This is actually 5 eighths inch drywall, which is more common, but just make it half inch. So with that in mind, I'm going to drop see this insulation, there's a line there. I'm going to go back to view and go to thin line and turn it back. And you can see that there's some um, heavier profiles in place that show where the wall starts and stops. Uh, this is a, you know, it, 
there's a higher level of legibility. I'm not sure that I like it being this heavy. Um, so here on the bat, this is semi-rigid insulation. I'm going to come in and match the light lines so that these uh, lines are a little fainter. We'll say OK. Uh, same with this jip. I'm going to edit that. I really don't need to see a heavy face right there. Um, say OK. And even my studs are really, really, really heavy. So if I hit tab and grab these studs, I'm hitting control to grab them all. I'm going to override graphics by their element. I'm going to come in and say, well, the projection lines are too heavy. Uh, let's make them a three. And I'll apply that. They're a little lighter. Let's go down to two. Apply that there. Maybe that's the, the line weight I'm looking for on my drawing. Same with these, uh, these 2 by 10s are really, really heavy. I know we're cutting through them, so they should be the, the heaviest element on the page. Um, but if I wanted to, I could set them to something much lighter and then come in and draft myself uh, the lines I want. So that's really the process. Um, it does help to have some pre-made materials, but Revit comes with a great deal of detailed components. And little by little, you'd build this drawing up. I could then come down and say, like, copy all of these things, and I'm just going to copy them up to the top of the window right there. And I know that my next window is up, so let's see if I can just align to the bottom of this window and snap. Whoops, got the wrong one there. Align to this window, that stud. Uh, I have multiple alignment on, so I can say this stud, the top of that, top of that these lines and that insulation. I'm going to have to copy, well, you know, I can align insulation and these blocks. I'm going to delete that one because that's the one we trimmed. I'm going to copy all these up, not this one here. Just like that. So that's how I'd go about building up uh, the wall section. In the future, for uh, the next coming weeks, we're going to look at how to do details. So under view, I'm going to do a call out, and I would call out this condition. I double click that, I could set this to something bigger, inch and a half. And this is where we'd really come in and show flashing, uh, water protection barriers, how uh, the, the brick would be held onto the facade. Um, but that's for another lesson. So this is how you would get started on drafting in uh, Revit to make a wall section.